How does it drive? Is it comfortable? And would you enjoy it? But how does she feel when compared to the big British brands, Princess, Fairline, and even the new entrant to the market, the Pearl 72? So pricing, it's in the description below. You're watching Dan's Boat Life, Dan Jones is my name, and welcome, well almost welcome, to the Pacific Ocean. Uh, we are just exiting Sydney Heads right now. I'm just gonna poke the boat outside, and we're gonna go around and demonstrate what she's like in a few different conditions offshore, into the swell, across and down, and then we're gonna go find some protected water just over there, we'll run the boat right up to full speed and see what she's capable of. And then at the end of this video, we're gonna take her to our anchorage and demonstrate some slow speed maneuvering. I'm gonna transition from this helm to the upper helm to the flybridge and we'll also try out the yacht controller. So let's get into it. Um, right now we're sitting on 1700 revs, got a fuel flow of 136 aside. Uh, we're running the 1550 V12 Mans and going into some swell right now. So I'm gonna just start to reposition myself so we're taking that swell head on. I've got a little bit of trim down on the interceptors. We have the Humphrey active stabilizers and they are set to on. I'm gonna leave them on for the whole drive because kind of, why wouldn't you uh, on a boat like this? And also because we've got some <laughs> plates and bowls and things still set out from the boat show and I don't want them to fall over. Okay. Here we go, into some swell. So maintaining 1700 revs, giving us 17 knots GPS speed over ground. And I will increase that just a tad, but we're not actually gonna wind the speed up until we actually start to go down swell, uh, which will be in a second. We have a very moderate, moderate waves today just coming in from a east to northeasterly direction. The wind is actually northwest right now. So it's probably 15 gusting to 20. We're gonna be seeing 25 plus later today. Um, that's why I'm hugging in around these rocks because it's difficult to fly my drone in strong wind. So that's, that's what I do there. All right, just adjusting our course there. Very quiet, incredibly quiet. Actually, that's my first takeaway. Um, when I compare this to the British builds that I have tested and the Italians, the, the decibels in here, it's, I've still got that back door open, but it's incredibly quiet. I, you, you, there's no need to raise your voice and long periods at the helm, uh, you know, if, if noise is something that you care about, well, you don't have to worry about it on this one. Um, you do have a bit of a loss of visibility from this pillar just here. Every boat in this category is gonna do that. So it's just one of those things. If you want the visibility, go upstairs. Um, so just pay attention. If you see me looking around, that's what I'm doing. Um, all clear, I'm gonna start turning still at that 1700 revs and I'm just doing a wide turn now. And we're gonna go take some of these swells on our beam and then we're gonna go down swell. We're really only dealing with half a, half a metre, short period, sort of wind, uh, whatever was left over from the day before, I suspect, and now getting messed up a bit from the northwesterly, so not much at all. A little bit of ground swell, but we've certainly seen it a lot worse. This time of year, when you get the predominantly offshore breezes, you don't get the large swells unless a system has blown in. Okay. With stabilizers on, I now have the swell coming in from my port side, port beam. And hopefully you can see through this camera, the horizon, it's pretty level. It's pretty level, that's comfortable. Let's give it a little bit more speed now. So I'm gonna increase those revs. God, those V12s do sound good. What I can hear of them from up here. Okay. Coming through 1800 revs, I can feel some of those waves going underneath the boat. 
fuel flow sitting at 180 now, and that's a steady 1800 revs. Now I'm seeing a speed of 18.8 knots, and now we're going down the waves and we have the wind on our starboard bow or starboard beam, depending on what it's doing with these rocks just here. Here we go. The boat feels a little bit more lively now, just popping up and over some of those waves. I haven't seen any water coming over uh, over the gunnels. It's quite a dry ride so much and so far, and you should see that on the drone shots. And now we're sitting on 20 knots, 20 knots, downswell, 1845 revs just there. Consumption has gone back down actually to 165 a side. So let's just give it a little bit more. I'm finding it very comfortable to stand. If I wanted to transition, I've got the bolster which I can flip down. I think if I was sitting like this, I'd have the autopilot engaged and I would just um, do this on longer journeys. If I was doing a Sydney Harbour run, I would probably opt for the standing position because I feel like I have more control from the standing position on my short runs and knowing what Sydney can be like on a Saturday or Sunday and you've got to fight with multiple boats, I feel like I would personally enjoy that a little bit more. I do like having the throttle exactly where my throttle hand wants it to be. Um, it's set back from the wheel, so it's really, really comfortable and I can operate. Um, looks like I've got thruster control just ahead of that, which we will play with when we get back into protected waters and obviously my yacht controller is there as well. All right, let's just give it a little bit more speed. Feels like you've got quite a few turns from hard lock starboard to port on this wheel and she's a predominantly bigger wheel, which you would expect, 72 foot of boat. So, okay, 2,000, 60 revs, 230 litres aside. Now we're moving, 23 knots. Um, this camera should tell you the bow raise from when we hit the plane to now, it's about consistent. There's a moderate, but the visibility, and I would know because I'm only 5'7", the visibility is still fine. I can play with my interceptors just here on the Humphrey control, and let's just have a little play with that. Let's just see if that drops the bow even more. Okay, that does. And you know what? That actually gave us a speed advantage of about half a knot. So we're just getting some of the stern of the boat out of the water. So I'll leave that on that setting until I increase my speed when we get around the corner here. 220 litres aside right now. 2,070 revs. Okay, clear all around. It's Friday today and it's still winter, so the harbour's not too bad. I'm gonna be doing a sweeping turn once I get in on the inside of South Head, we're gonna do wide open throttle before we then do a moderately fast turn and just talk to you about what we feel. So now we're getting some wind chop coming in, um, exposing itself to the boat here on starboard. No water coming up that I can see. You'll, see, you'll obviously, obviously see that on the drone as well. And let's increase that speed. Oh yeah, okay, now she feels like she's starting to boogie. With the stabilizers, the heel angles are very minimal. So from a guest perspective, you know, you're hardly even gonna lose any drinks off the table right now. So I'm now at 26.7 knots. I've got a rev setting of 2,200 and I'm burning 256 aside. I'm going to raise those interceptors in a second and increase my speed. I've just got one C row. I've just got to work out where he's going before I make a call on where I'm going to go. It's, I don't want to annoy him. Okay, I'm just going to show my intentions and go to starboard. There we go. Now let's give it some speed. You do notice those extra turns on the wheel. Okay, raise those interceptors. Increase speed, 28 knots. 
2,350 revs, 294 litres aside. Clear, clear. I'm going to run this way. He's on port and I'm clear up ahead. Okay, let's go wide open throttle. I can see 29 knots. That's foot to the floor. I'm going to have some waves coming on the bow in a second. In about three, two, one, and up and over them at 29 knots. Now I'm going to play with the Humphreys. I'm just going to retract them, see what happens. That bow really raises there, 29.3 knots. And now I'm going to lower them a little bit and see by flattening the boat out, does that give us any extra speed? Often you will find that on a style of boat like this. Look at that, 29.4, 29.5. Ha ha ha, this is cool. <laughs> oh man, honestly, this is the best feeling. Cruising around on big boats, burning diesel and making miles. Who wouldn't want to do this on their weekend? Okay, I can see 29.6 knots. We are in windy conditions. I'm wide open throttle. I'm just gonna give it a bit more trim down. See if that gives me any more. 29.7. I've got to come off the pace there now. Okay, now I'm just gonna hold a moderate speed and we're going to just hook into Chowder Bay. We'll just see how that feels in terms of a heel angle. Yeah, you do notice those turns. I guess it's um, just something you get used to. I don't see that as a negative. Just plenty of boats that I've driven before, you just have less turns on the wheel. It's, uh, I suppose, when you think about it, having the extra turns may give you a greater degree of control. And also the wheel itself is quite easy to turn. There's no resistance. It's almost, it's almost toy-like. Okay, coming in at 25 knots. My fuel flow is it sitting at 244. I'm gonna come back to a more sensible speed. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I hope that was um, valuable to you. Um, what an interesting experience. I'm starting to notice a few trends in the boating world. There are a lot of manufacturers in what we could perhaps call the new world popping up and making some really cool products. And this is definitely one of them. Um, that was a lot of fun. That's really enjoyable to drive. And I think for many of you looking for that classic big boat experience, you're definitely gonna get it on this Majesty 72. Um, is it as refined and as good as the Princess and the Fairlines? Well, not exactly. They probably have a little bit of work to go. Is it the same price? No. Can you put it straight into charter in Australia and make it work for you? Yes. So when you start to think about boats like this, and then also the Pearl, which is made in China, um, I'm seeing some serious competition and some business cases for boats like this um, in our market because you can make them work for you, for you and they do everything that they say they're gonna do. So. It's good looking, it's fast, it's efficient, and it's easy to drive, and it's got a hell of a lot of space, which is basically what you probably need in something like this. So guys, if you want to get a detailed walkthrough of this boat, I've already done that. I did that at the Dubai International Boat Show, so I'll link to that video on the screen right now. Um, don't forget to support the channel. Uh, I have a Patreon. Please give it a like, share it with your mates if you enjoy this content. Uh, I'm really working hard to bring as much valuable information as I can to you guys. I genuinely want to save you time. So if we can avoid you having to travel around and see, uh, spend too much of your time looking at multiple boats, if you can whittle it down to one or two on my channel, then that would be a great thing and I'd be super happy to hear that we've achieved that for you. Uh, anyway. You've been watching Dan's Boat Life. My name's Dan Jones. On to the next adventure. Uh, can't wait to see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.